Since watching Kat Musney Fitness's vlog about journaling, I've started each day in the same way that she does. I get my cup of tea, my journal, and sit for a few minutes reflecting, setting intentions, or just getting things off my chest. So far, I found it very helpful. I have devised myself some affirmations that I keep finding pop in my head, especially when some of my destructive habits creep up. As an aside, and following on from my last blog about playfulness, Kat is so playful. I think this is a large part of what makes her videos and updates a joy to watch. If you don't have Kat in your life, I'd urge you to check her out. I love her workouts. It has been so valuable to spend a few moments each morning centering myself. But not today. Yesterday evening, I was pondering what I might like to write my next blog about. I had lots of ideas, but nothing that was standing out as something that I had to express. Not until my mum sent me this video of the most beautiful, natural, tiny house. I was actually fixated. I watched it through twice and would have watched it a third time, but then got distracted by looking at houses for sale in the UK. Anyway, it caused me to think about my relationship with nature. In our last house, I found that I had a distinct craving for nature. It frustrated me that I wasn't able to be in nature very much. I don't crave it in the same way here. Being surrounded by beautiful countryside and beautiful trees really helps. Also, it is much warmer here compared to the north. I spend a lot more time in my garden. As I sit here writing this morning, this is my current view. I mean, how fortunate am I? So my relationship with nature has improved, but it still isn't at the level of connection that innate part of me desires. Interestingly, it is only since moving into this house a year ago that my houseplant hobby has really taken off. I wonder if this beautiful house and location have been conduits to my further connection through houseplants. I think many of us who love to have plants in our side our houses would say that part of it is because we love being surrounded by nature and living things, right? Yeah. There's the mental health elements in terms of finding them soothing, focusing on the present as well as the future. Having living things depending on us can make us feel like we have a purpose. Plus they look aesthetically pleasing too. However, I think an innate need to be connected with the earth is a factor. It certainly is for me. Writing this is making me want to watch that video again. Going back to my first point and why I found journaling hard this morning, while sitting in my garden yesterday, staring up at the beautiful trees, I was listening to a podcast from This Jungian, Jungian Life about creativity. They outline how Jung described that people often found themselves pestered or bothered by their creativity. They had ideas in their heads and they would keep pestering their keepers until creative action was taken. I can so relate to this. Since watching that video yesterday, my brain will not shut up about this blog post. It keeps coming up with new ideas and thoughts and things to research. I'm super excited to be writing it now. I did manage to write in my journal this morning, but I took the time it takes to boil the kettle to complete the process. My inner self did not want to take a moment longer or a minuscule of creativity more than was absolutely necessary so that we could get on with our writing. This is all that I wrote. I've never experienced this before. Throughout my life, I have written many articles, reports, assignments, etc., but never felt so pestered and driven to create in this way. It is fascinating to me. I was wondering whether my creative energy was previously all used up in my job. Teaching is a very creative profession. All day long, you're expressing creativity. In addition, it's exhausting and you have little time outside of work to pursue alternative outlets, in my experience. So now that I'm unemployed and consequently feeling like I have a lot of freedom, this is an entirely new experience for me. I am loving it and feel very fortunate. However, this isn't my only creative outlet. This week I've made some educational resources for Scarborough Southcliffe Gardens as voluntary work, so I'm not exactly sure what is at the root of my newfound drive but it definitely is a thing. Each time I've written a blog post, I have pretty much sprung out of bed in the morning, sometimes ridiculously early, 
because I just had to express the things in my head to shut them up more than anything. I would love to hear about others' experiences of this feeling. Anyway, back to the houseplants. This week, being the nerd that I am, I read the article Teaching Gardens, The Sociology of Plants by Jennifer Gray. She outlines the importance of nature in education, especially as a counter to the laissez-faire or hands-off capitalism and social inequality. Miss Gray describes how education changed in industrialised Britain to focus on remote me- uh, to focus on rote mem- memorising of information and move away from exploratory experiential learning which taught social cohesion and community action. In the article she says she thinks the movement towards including nature and learning is from a desire to return to pre-industrialised society that is more natural and connected with nature. This led me to think about how much our lives are removed from nature today and what the causes and purposes of this are. I could probably write a very rambling book about this, so skirting past most of the issue. Yesterday I completed an open university free course titled Living Without Oil and got the certificate. The course illustrated for me how much globally we are entirely dependent on oil. The majority of the things around us are derived from oil. Our sofas are filled with foam from oil, our devices are derived from oil, our synthetic carping, flooring and clothes are from oil, our food production requires oil in terms of packaging, machines to farm it, transportation, the list goes on. Compared to pre-industrialised Britain, this is a very different picture. Don't get me wrong, I am very much happy that I don't live in pre-industrialised Britain. I quite like my liberties and rights as well as medical advancements and consequent increase in life expectancy, not to mention the internet. But within my DNA is an innate understanding of nature and connection. So since we have moved away from in-tuned living, it makes sense that I, and perhaps we, would crave it in our homes, right? Returning to mental health, there are also many articles about how being in nature helps mental health. I recall listening to a podcast some time ago and hearing the phrase, take your immune system for a walk. I think it was either the doctor's pharmacy or broken brain podcast, I can't remember which. As I've been trying to sort out my haywire immune system for some time, this really stuck with me. It was explained that we need exposure to natural vibes, bacteria, organisms, fungus, because for millions of years, this has been a part of our own microbiome. I have no idea about the validity of this thinking, but it caused me to wonder again, am I so drawn to keeping houseplants because of these things? I was delighted to find mushrooms in my begonia this week. My friend is quite critical of having so many houseplants. She says that they bring bugs in. She is so right. I have so many bugs in my house. I can't, I kind of like that though. It's all part of nature and my immune system can enjoy it from the comfort of its own home. On the topic of creativity and being pestered by our heads, how many of us feel a drive to be creative with houseplants? I know sometimes I go down that rabbit hole because there are things I want to achieve and create, but other times I do things because they need to be done and don't feel the same drive.